Good morning. Please stand as you are able for hymn number 389. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, 
God forgives you all your sins. For those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Uh, if we will turn to the um, page in the bulletin, we will sing the first verse of Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. chapter 17. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it, in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree, and I make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. Please join me in reading from... Psalm 92. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. To hear what you love in the morning, and your faithfulness in the night. On the psaltery and on the lyre, and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent. That they may show how upright the Lord is, my God, and in whom there is no justice. The second lesson is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. 
Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to our consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Here ends this lesson. someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It's like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. And he did not speak to them except in parables but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, good morning, and happy Father's Day to the fathers that are here with us, to all those Dads who serve as mentors, making a positive difference in the lives of children and families everywhere. Uh, today, many of us remember our dads with fondness and tears as they have um, joined the saints triumphant. And may loving memories bring you comfort today. We also know that not everyone has good fathers, and many people never knew their dads, and we pray for all who are struggling with those memories today. So as we worship, let us give thanks and praise to the greatest Father of all, God our Creator, who gives us life and who sent Jesus Christ to tell us of God's love and grace. John chapter 1 verse 18 says, no one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known to us. None of us can fully understand God's divine mysteries, but we are to trust and to have faith. In today's Gospel, Jesus describes the kingdom of God through the parables of scattering seed and the mustard seed. We learn that God's kingdom exists and that someday it will bloom and come to pass. But it remains mysterious because we cannot physically see the proof of it. It's almost as mysterious as the growing process. We know when seeds are planted and when they receive water and sunshine, 
when they will sprout and grow. But we can't actually see them growing. You know, even the mile a minute weed, you sit and you stare at it, or that amlanthus bush that grows so fast everywhere, you don't see it actually growing. You go to bed, you wake up, it's bigger. It's a mystery. We might be able to describe how it grows, but it's God's alone, our creator, who sustains all life and growth, and who ripens the grain for the harvest. So Marlene has a story here about a scientist who tells God that since he's now able to create life in a laboratory test tube, that science, scientists no longer need God. And God says, okay, show me. So the scientist stoops over, scoops up some dirt to put in his test tube. And God says, no, 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 no. You can't do that because I made the dirt. You have got to go make your own dirt. It's a reminder that God is creator and that the kingdom belongs to God. One pastor says this, God creates it, defines it, and any effort on our part to create a kingdom in our own human image will fail. God works in the world bringing the kingdom to come to pass sometimes just one person at a time. In the first parable we heard, the kingdom of God is in the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and the seed would sprout and grow, but he does not know how. So let's plant some seeds and think about it, to think about it. Perhaps the parable refers to God's mysterious seeds of grace planted within each of us, as we are reminded that nothing we can do there's nothing we can do to earn our own salvation. Grace is God's gift when we trust and believe in Jesus Christ. As humans, we think we must do something to earn what we receive, or we must find a way to achieve it before we can accept such a gift. But these are the ways of the world, and God's ways are not our ways. Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 2 writes, But God, who was rich in mercy, out of great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By, the grace, you have, by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works so that no one may boast. God's love is kind of hard for us to understand. As we know that Jesus died for us on the cross and rose again, giving us the promise of eternal life. The presence of our crucified and risen Lord in our lives transforms us into new people as our sins are forgiven. God's love and salvation are revealed in John 3.16. It's actually the only verse I've ever memorized. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus reveals that God's kingdom is active in the world, even though we may not see it. Perhaps we need to view the positive things that happen to us, like our blessings, to see how God works in our lives instead of always focusing on negatives. As we participate in worship and prayer and study God's word, the Holy Spirit nourishes our souls and feeds our spirits as God's message of love and grace take root. Worship and prayer might seem like a mysterious process to those who only desire the world's power, fame, and wealth. But it's through this spiritual journey that God directs our paths and grows our seeds of faith. Seeds are an important image for life and growth. So perhaps we can see why Jesus uses 
mustard seeds to describe God's kingdom. Did you know that mustard seeds were common in the time of Jesus? Part of the pun, Marley wrote this. But she did some digging. And she found some interesting facts for us to ponder. Coming from the cabbage family, didn't know that, black mustard plants are native to the Middle East and Southern Asia, but they're also found in many states, including Maryland. It's an aggressive winter reed that grows rapidly. It can range from two to eight feet tall. Wow. And it spreads its seeds like any good aggressive weed does. For thousands of years, people cultivated several species of mustard. Of mustard. Sources say Romans ground these seeds to flavor wine or vinegar. I don't think I want to have mustard seed wine. Sorry. French monks mixed ground seeds with unfermented wine, and they called it must, M-U-S-T, giving us the name mustard. Research points to something fascinating about the unique flower of the black mustard plant. Its technical family name is known as crucifera, which means cross-bearing, because the flower has four yellow petals that bear the shape of a cross. This parable says, really teaches us never to be daunted by small beginnings. It may seem that at the moment our little congregation only can have a small effect. But it's that small effect that is repeated and repeated. And so eventually that small effect will become very great. There's a scientific experiment my, my uh, 11th grade science teacher did to show us the effect of, of dyes in, in water. A lot, he had a large vessel of clear water and a little tiny vial of dye. And he would put like just a, a few drops in the water of dye, and it looked like nothing, nothing happened at all. Like there was nothing. And then, at quite suddenly, the whole vessel of water suddenly begins tinged with that color. And bit by bit, that color deepens until the whole vessel is col colored, the same color of the dye. It was the repeated drops that produced that effect. We often feel that for all we can do, it's hardly worthwhile starting a thing at all. But we must remember that somebody has got to start something. Somebody has had to start everything. Everything must have a beginning. Nothing emerges full grown. It's our duty to do what we can. And the cumulative effect of all of our small efforts in the end can produce an amazing result. God's kingdom might seem hidden or impossible to detect right now, but it's growing because its roots are firmly planted in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It cannot be eradicated, and its growth is not limited to the sacred places within church walls. God's kingdom pops up everywhere. It is our job to trust God and continue to plant the seeds of faith. Think about it, many seeds have already been planted just by our little congregation. Last year, we collected sneakers for 40 needy children in the Frederick and Washington County area. Remember when we sewed and stuffed a hundred bags full of essential school supplies for a hundred children around the world will never know who they were 
But those school supplies are allowing them to get a good education. And that might unlock or, or might give them their ticket out of poverty. This past Lent, we collected food for um, neighbors in our area that are hungry. Over Christmas, we gathered snacks and scarves for people who are in hospice to comfort people at kind of the worst times of their lives. And then remember the bath towels and the soap and the toothpaste and the nail clippers? We developed these hygiene kits that are given to people who have suffered under natural disasters. Pastor Marlene and Carol heard some examples of some ministry at the most recent Synod Assembly. St. John's and Harmony, as well as the larger Synod, planted seeds of hope and compassion with our donations to the Baltimore's Key Bridge disaster. Our collective congregations, just in our Synod, raised $39,000. We were a part of that. It helped those families affected by the tragedy. 150 personal care kits and quilts were given during the Synod's Seafarers Ministry to those who were stationed on ships that could not leave the Baltimore Harbor. <laughs> Lutheran young people will gather in New Orleans in July for Elka's 2024 Lutheran Youth Gathering. And at the time where many church camps have closed, our synod is planting seeds at Marlow Ridge, right just down the road, through our various missions. Ministry also continues at three college campuses in Newark, Delaware, and Baltimore. Many pastors and others serving our churches experience growth in their faith at these gatherings. But of course, there's still many challenges. We know we may never fully see the results of all the seeds we plant, but the growing season is in God's hands. As we take up our cross and follow Jesus, God uses all of our gifts and even our human weaknesses and what we've learned from life's challenges to make a difference in the lives of others. The seed parables remind us that God's kingdom will not remain hidden forever as its seeds are spread far and wide where people, all people, find comfort and peace. It also reminds us that the gospel of Jesus Christ and the promise of God's grace and forgiveness are not lying dormant in the ground, but actively growing the kingdom. For us, Maybe the mustard seed reminds us of courage. Remember, it's not the numbers that matter as we gather for worship. It's what we say and do from our hearts that matters. God does the growing. It's also a reminder that all growth comes from small beginnings. Remember, the ministry of Jesus just started with 12 disciples. And now look at what God has done. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 reminds us that as Christians, we walk by faith, not by sight. And Jesus gives us courage in Luke 12. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Marlene says God's kingdom will grow and bloom in God's own time. How do we know? God tells us so in Ezekiel 17. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. Amen. Now, if you would rise as you're able for our hymn of the day, number 474. Stand as you are able.
the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 9 in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We come before the Triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Nourish your faithful people through gifts of word and worship. Guide the church in listening to and interpreting your message of grace for this time and place in history. In your wisdom, lead us in expanding the reach of your love, merciful God. Nature sings your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Sustain the holy rhythms of creation, days and seasons, hibernation and activity, phases of the moon and tides of the sea. Let these patterns assure us of your constancy, merciful God. You raise the lowly and humble those in high regard. Raise up all who are victims of marginalization, discrimination, and hate. As we anticipate Juneteenth, banish white supremacy and bigotry from the hearts of your people and remove the inclination toward anger and violence. Merciful God. Tend to all who journey by faith and who wait with patience for the fulfillment of your healing promises. Grant perseverance to people doing physical and occupational therapy, people living with mobility concerns, and people facing chronic pain. Remember your people and pastors of Christ Lutheran Church Baltimore as they recover from Friday's fire. We pray for all on our prayer list, those we name in our hearts and those we name out loud. Merciful God, we pray for those in the path of war and conflict in the Middle East and Ukraine. Be with those who lost homes and loved ones in the recent storms and forest fires, the people of Texas and Iowa, Florida, Hawaii, and all across our land. Protect all who serve their community and our nation, our first responders, and our military, especially St. John's own son, Saint. Merciful God. As you have loved us, so let us love one another. Empower fathers, stepfathers, grandfathers, adoptive fathers, and chosen fathers to embody this gift of love for their children. Where these relationships are strained or broken, bring your comfort and peace. Merciful God. With gratitude, we remember all our heavenly fathers and earthly fathers who have gone before us, and all the saints who are now at home with you. Plant seeds of their wisdom and witness in our hearts that we grow in faith until we join them in your heavenly dwelling. Merciful God. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Thank you.
this moment to share the peace with one another. At this time, we will take our morning offering. We will need two ushers. There's one. There we go. Two. for the offertory response. God, Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We turn to page 500 for Faith of Our Fathers, our closing hymn.
Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God.